right welcome to this introduction um, uh, chapter that uh, sorry session of module 1 and let me present the screen Are you able to see? Yes, ma'am. One second. I can't see the presentation. Yeah, it's visible now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Now uh, let's start this lecture one of module one. One second. Yeah. So the topics to be covered today are introduction to learning problems and how we can design the learning problems and uh, how to understand a well posed learning problems what are the criteria that is required in order to create a well posed learning problem uh, so uh, how does the machines actually learn machines learn from experience right so when you are at or uh, when you are um, uh, teaching a child about uh, an experiment how does it learn it learns only through experience right they do it they do it and they understand that uh, say a kid is learning to walk he falls down and then he gets up and thinks that if an obstacle um, is seen on his way and he steps on that he may fall down so he gains that kind of uh, intuition or memory and uh, later whenever he comes across some obstacle he takes care not to uh, fumble upon that uh, uh, sorry stumble upon that and fall down right so that is how um, uh, learning is done through experience same way machines also learn with experience they see the existing data they see the patterns in the existing data and they try to find uh, what would happen with the uh, forthcoming data okay uh, and learning also happens from medical records in healthcare domain means if medical records like electronic health records ehrs are given uh, they are taking the parameters or uh, say uh, uh, symptoms uh, of a particular disease okay for covid uh, say dry cough running nose these are various symptoms recorded uh, mostly among the patients okay say uh, taking these symptoms and only dry cough no uh, running nose or uh, only uh, body pains uh, no fever like that there are combinations of parameters which will uh, decide an outcome variable whether a patient is diagnosed to be covid positive or not right so based on the combination of these parameters the machine learns whether a patient can be diagnosed as a positive patient or a negative patient right uh, in that way it learns from the medical records that are already existing and tries to predict when some parameters are given about a new patient it will predict whether um, that particular patient is a positive patient or a negative patient means whether he is a covid patient or not a covid patient right and it does that uh, prediction with some amount of confidence it doesn't simply predict as yes or no it has some confidence in predicting that how that confidence is obtained only by learning from the experience by drawing various inferences from the historic medical records right that is how learning is done by a machine from the medical records sometimes even smart homes if you take the uh, scenario of smart homes 
smart homes will try to uh, optimize the uh, usage patterns i'm sorry optimize the usage of energy in that particular house by learning from the energy usage patterns of its residents right it observes that most of the time in the evening the family uh, sits in the hall okay so the lights in the other rooms can be switched off okay now more motion is captured in the uh, kitchen uh, at night uh, at dinner time say 8 o'clock around 8 o'clock so all the other lights uh, power can be reduced that brightness can be reduced in order to save the power consumption and in uh, kitchen and dining area the power, uh, power uh, sorry the brightness can be increased for the lights right in that way in the smart homes uh, identifying the motion or movement of the residents in that particular house it can um, uh, optimize the usage patterns uh, so that it can save on the bills um, that the uh, house gets um, uh, due to energy consumption right and even uh, learning evol evolving user interests how um, uh, uh, say uh, the user is more interested in sports news he is uh, uh, a user is uh, some, uh, say user subscribe for a newspaper but he is interested to read sports news more or uh, he is interested to read political news more based on his interest this web content can be pushed this newspaper can push its web content based on the theory of the news that particular uh, customer has uh, an interest to read right so that he can improve the um, uh, say uh, experience of the customer for that particular um, uh, web, uh, web content provider okay that is how uh, learning the user interest Uh, based on the experience gained from learning the evolving interests of the user it can suggest uh, most probable news to that particular customer okay that is how it can uh, learn from a user's behavior and learning to target customer this we have discussed in the morning class right Uh, how to target the customers uh, uh, say uh, there is a business customer uh, business customers frequently go on trips so uh, this make my trip or uh, say indigo uh, 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 flying company all these will target some discounts to a particular group of customers yeah these people have traveled in the last 3 months very frequently okay uh, so uh, that is the end of the financial year Uh, so they might have travel very frequently in order to discuss something in the meetings okay so every year at that particular uh, semester or that particular uh, 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 say what uh, annual uh, um, uh, part of the year that particular part of the year uh, we can give some uh, discounts to that particular customer okay so that he he will tend to travel more and increase the profits for that flying okay that is how uh, uh, the business organizations target the customers with customized discounts or with customized offers or with customized coupon codes so that they won't move on to other flying companies they retain those customers by giving attractive uh, discounts or attractive uh, uh, coupon codes in order to get some uh, uh, reduction on the uh, flight tickets okay that is uh, uh, how they do that how they learn about the customers uh, traveling patterns that is done by machine learning uh, applications by putting some machine learning applications in place to various uh, uh, branches of the uh, sorry to various departments of the org um, organization uh, you can uh, start increasing its um, uh, market uh, with the customers okay so detailed understanding of information processing algorithms for machine learning is very much required in order to select the best machine learning algorithm suitable for a given task okay in order to increase the performance of that uh, particular algorithm or in order to increase its predicting power uh, or increase its generalization capability generalization means okay for this data set it is working well 
I'm trying to uh, analyze the data of some 200 customers, but are they the only 200 customers for the organization? No, they have some millions of customers. But I'm trying to take a sample and trying to analyze it. Remember, sample is randomly drawn. I can't pick specific customers as a sample, right, in order to analyze them. I randomly pick 200 customers out of some 10 million customers trying to analyze their behavior and making a machine learning algorithm generalized to the larger population of 10 million customers. That is my motive when I'm writing a machine learning algorithm or when I'm trying to fit a data, uh, when I'm trying to fit a model to the data set at hand. Okay, now I pick 200 customers. Now, next time I'm trying to fit a model, I pick two uh, other set of, uh, uh, other 200 set of customers. Remember, sample is always drawn at random. When I'm drawing the sample at random, you remember when I make predictions or when I assess the performance of a machine learning algorithm with this particular sample, it may not perform with the same accuracy with a, with a different sample. That is why you have to find the best performing machine learning algorithm which can generalize to the larger population. Means whatever is uh, whatever predictions are made on the this particular data set after fitting the model should be generalizable to even 10 million customers. So that if a new customer data is given to you, uh, given to the machine learning uh, model, it has to predict with good accuracy. Okay, that is the motive for that. You need to have a detailed understanding of information processing algorithms and which one to select, which one would be the most optimal one for that particular data at hand and to answer the problem at hand, okay? Now, machine learning is not at par with human learning. Uh, human learning is more advanced, right? Uh, th th this is where the implications occur. Uh, you have seen the Robo movie and I already specified this uh, Android Kunjapan movie. Uh, there, the machines failed to grab the emotions of the human beings. And humans normally behave according to the environment around them and the emotions that are triggered within them according to the environment, correct? Uh, so human learning is actually uh, quite different from how machines learn. That is why this statement is made. Machine learning is not at par with human learning. So theoretical understanding of learning is emerging. So there, uh, there uh, has been put in place a proper theoretical understanding about how machines can actually learn and how we can transform the machine learning to be as good as human learning. Each, uh, each and every day uh, advances are happening in this machine learning field in order to make the machines learn at par with, this, with the humans. Okay, so machine learning algorithms outperform other approaches in areas such as speech recognition, right? Where do you find the speech recognition? Can you give an example? Uh, ma'am, uh, smart speakers, ma'am. Smart speakers. Can yes, you name a few? Alexa, Google Home. Yes, Alexa, Siri. Yes, yes. who is BHP. this? Surush okay. Shasham. Right. So this uh, speech recognition alg uh, the algorithms are actually outperforming when compared to other approaches. Uh, say when uh, if you take a Amazon Fire Stick and you ask Alexa to play something, to play a movie on uh, Prime Video, it start it recognizes your voice, right, and starts playing that. And even uh, sometimes children start playing with that Alexa, like Alexa, do you know how to laugh? Still, it tries to understand uh, the question and tries to answer at its best. It just sings a nice song. If you have uh, a fire stick, you can just ask Alexa, do you know how to laugh? It sings a nice song by laughing. Okay, uh, so uh, such kind of uh, advances have taken place in speech recognition. And if you want to uh, 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 give a command, say, uh, give the geographical locations, where uh, geographical coordinates, where am I? 
um, uh, so that you can know where exactly you are located so that you you can share your location uh, to uh, other people who want to reach you or a cab driver who want to reach you right uh, so people are actually not typing anything these days they're trying to give some commands orally and machines are understanding that and still if they are not able to understand at present they will uh, just prompt you to uh, be more clear and when you're more clear they will compare your current question which they didn't understand and they compare the question which is more clearly posed to the machine and they will compare these two and next time when you give an unclear question still it will be able to decode what the actual question is okay and it will try to answer its best that is how machines learn from experience and machine learning algorithms are being used for knowledge discovery from large commercial databases like equipment maintenance records uh, uh, say uh, if you have a nuclear reactor uh, or if you take uh, say combustion um, uh, engines where the or uh, uh, rocket combustion chambers where the temperature will be very high Uh, in that case some sensors can't actually uh, be put inside uh, uh, the combustion chamber in order to measure various temperatures the sensors will burn away so that have to be put outside the combustion chamber in order to sense the temperatures now outside combustion chamber the temperatures that are captured can be right away used because they are not the actual temperatures in that case machine learning algorithms will use some um, uh, filters like kalman filters which will help them to transform from uh, un uh, observed data uh, sorry uh, observed data to unobserved data which is actually the correct measurement okay such kind of um, uh, equipment uh, the such kind of uh, details uh, equipment maintenance records um, uh, how to maintain a particular plant in an industry and how various uh, machines are working under that particular plant uh, which can't be monitored daily can be actually um uh, say uh, made to be learned by a machine and the old data can be provided to it so that it can assess the plants functioning in the future so you need not monitor it daily okay that is um, uh, how machine learning algorithms uh, use equipment maintenance records in order to um, understand the functioning of various in uh, plants in an industry and even loan applications discussed this in the previous session right um, loan applications of various applicants will be uh, understood by the machine learning algorithm and it will identify which features actually try to make a better prediction like uh, uh, say uh, customer is having own house or he is having income above this particular range what is his age and whether uh, he is having a regular job or a private job uh, uh, whether he has taken loan recently is his um, uh, credit score uh, with the previous loans what uh, features or what parameters will help a machine to predict whether that particular loan applicant would be a good payer or a default of the loan uh, that, that, that will uh, be uh, understood uh, that can be understood by this machine learning algorithms okay and even financial transactions um, uh, we have spoken about fraudulent transactions money laundering right for all these um, lots of commercial databases are available data sources which specifically gather the data are available and that will be provided in order to make the machines learn from that data uh, and uh, so that it can work with the current uh, application and predict better with the new data points and the medical records these also we have seen um, uh, to uh, uh, say, understand the patient will like by a disease or not or whether a patient belongs to a, uh, a green zone or orange zone or red zone like that based on some parameters some classification can be done how this can be done only by studying about the uh, studying the patient's medical records previous medical records right so as our understanding increases so is the role of machine learning in computer science and computer technology in the previous days 
we used to make the machines learn how to play a game and play the games that's all and later it has increased to uh, we use healthcare domain and uh, say market prediction or recommender systems and now it, the scenario is gradually changing now it is improved now we are making the machines learn to work as our personal assistants so the scenario has changed from a global perspective to a local perspective where we are uh, interacting with the machines uh, not as a group but with a personal approach okay that is how as uh, this field is unveiling itself as the understanding increases about this particular machine learning field its role also kept on increasing in the computer science and the computer technology uh, areas now let us understand what is a well posed learning problem uh, and uh, uh, do not take learning in the sense of uh, 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 like um, uh, uh, direct literal meaning learning is we are learning something okay uh, uh, let us see how the machine learns okay uh, uh, how to create a well posed learning problems now let us consider few learning tasks in order to begin our study of machine learning let us see what are the uh, basic uh, things required what is the notion behind uh, a learning problem how do we understand a problem in order to make a machine learn okay now let us see the formal definition given by tom michel for this learning problem a computer program understand this carefully it's very important question because definition itself will make you uh, understand the overall view of this Uh, machine learning okay so a computer program is said to learn from experience e there are three important terms in this definition e t and p so let me explain you each of them in detail a computer program is said to learn from experience e with respect to some class of tasks t and performance measure p if its performance at the task t as measured by the performance p improves the experience e i would like to stress on this definition again and again because this itself will set the stage for you to understand further concepts any um, learning problem is a computer program we are just writing a computer program right if you want to predict something you are writing a computer program if you are trying to classify something you are writing a computer program it's just a computer program which is said to learn from experience e experience e means what say historical data or uh, it is trying to predict something or trying to classify something right with respect to some class of task t so what are the tasks here it is predicting the weather for the next one week or it is classifying whether a transaction is fraudulent or not or it is trying to cluster the uh, customers as uh, uh, kids middle age and senior citizens these are all the tasks which would be learned uh, which would be performed by learning from experience e and performance measure p what would be the performance measure how correctly it is classifying how correctly it is class uh, how correctly it is predicting something okay tomorrow's weather is predicted as 34 degrees celsius and tomorrow's weather is 33.7 degrees celsius yes its prediction is almost correct right so uh, we give it a performance measure it has predicted very well okay that is called as p so let let us repeat this definition once again a computer program is said to learn from experience e that is a historic data or by its predictions learning from its own predictions that is also treated as experience not only from the historic data but also learning from its own predictions is called as experience okay experience e with respect to some class of task t p is like classification prediction clustering any of the tasks and performance measure p that is how good it is uh, predicting or how good it is classifying how correctly it is doing its task 
that is called the performance measure p if its performance at task in t as measured by p improves the experience e okay so these two terms at this task t how good this uh, uh, did this program perform it learns from its experience okay 99% it predicted correctly what about 1% where it went wrong it tries to learn from the experience and next time it will try to predict with 100% accuracy okay so it is trying to improve each time by uh, learning from its experience okay now i'll read the definition all together a computer program is said to learn from experience e with respect to some class of tasks t and performance measure p if if what is the condition here if its performance at tasks in t as measured by p improves the experience e next time initially the performance is 98 now it has increased to 99 because it learned from its experience now it has increased to 100% because it learned from its experience so it is continuously improving by learning from the experience okay that is explained by this definition now we can take the example of playing checkers game or forecasting the weather okay playing checkers game you know the checkers game right there are uh, black and white uh, coins uh, which will uh, which will be placed on either side of the board and they have to cross over itself and reach the other side so that they can move to and fro you can just go through the uh, youtube how to play checkers you will have an idea on that it is somewhat like a chess game but not exactly because all the coins look the same and uh, they will be in black and white colors which can be played by two people okay so uh, playing checkers game how uh, what would be the next move for each coin and how good it is proceeding further in order to win the game what strategy it approaches okay all this can be used to train a machine so that it can play by itself okay uh, now uh, let us first see what are the suc uh, successful applications of machine learning now learning to recognize spoken words uh, we have seen the example of alexa and uh, uh, siri uh, it, it uh, tries to recognize the spoken words and searches the internet if the data is not available in uh, with it and tries to answer our question at the best now if it is not able to un, uh, understand it properly it tries to meet the expectation this much percent means it tries to do its best and once the user um, uh, the response is satisfactory then it will try to learn from that experience and tries to modify its next response okay that is how uh, this machine learning algorithms will help a uh, machine to recognize the spoken words and learning to drive an autonomous vehicle and the way uh, uh, driving of an autonomous vehicle it learns from uh, pre fed uh, images or pre fed steering commands and it tries to uh, uh, take a particular action at that instance of time say a, 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 suddenly it encounters a car what action it has to take within fractions of second uh, uh, so to avoid any collision with the um, uh, uh, confronting car or uh, whether it has to take a different lane or whether it has to apply the brake or whether it has to completely stop when it sees a red signal all these uh, is learned by experience and by also overseeing the driver um, work with uh, by the driver driving the car uh, physically okay and even learning to classify new astronomical structures Uh, NASA is presently using some three terabytes of image data uh, in order to uh, classify the celestial objects, uh, uh, so that uh, it, it can have some alert kind of thing. Uh, say a uh, meteor is uh, approaching the Earth, uh, uh, with what speed it is approaching, whether it will cause any harm to the Earth, or uh, it will uh, pass uh, uh, from beside the Earth. or uh, whether the approaching astronomical object or celestial object is a star dust or whether it is some um, comet uh, like that it will try to classify the celestial objects based on the image database it has 
okay and even learning to play world class backgammon uh, 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 and now uh, there is one um, computer program called as pd gammon uh, which is playing world class games and it is uh, performing as well uh, as a, a, a expert uh, backgammon player and it is actually winning uh, most percent of the games it is trained it is trained to uh, play this game like a expert okay so these are all the applications of machine learning now to have a well defined problem we must first identify three features so when you are trying trying to formulate a problem uh, say you wanted to develop a computer program which will measure the retention rate of employees in a particular organization or a computer program which can uh, predict uh, whether a customer is um, a loyal customer or not or uh, you are developing a computer program which will detect whether a cell is cancerous cell or not or you are developing a computer program which finds whether a patient is of covid positive or not okay these are all the problems now we are trying to formulate uh, you are trying to design a computer program to answer various problems right so uh, uh, what should be the key features for this how to start with Uh, to develop an application machine learning application in order to answer the problems okay for that you have you have to identify the class of tasks what tasks have to be performed and the uh, measure for performance to be improved what measure you have uh, to take in order to improve the performance and the source of experience how the experience is drawn how the learning is made from which source the learning is made whether it is from a data set or existing historical data or whether uh, it is from its own predictions it is learning you have to identify the source of experience from which the machine will learn again and again in order to improve its performance in order at the task okay so this is the class of task t this is the performance measure p and this is e the source of experience e so it is trying to increase uh, learn from its experience in order to increase its performance at the given task that is how you need to formulate a problem formulate a learning problem okay now uh, what are the diverse scenarios we come across while making a machine learn what problems we encounter let us take the simplest of the problems in order to understand these three features better okay so the first uh, task let us take as a checkers learning problem you are trying to create uh, you are trying to design a computer program which plays checkers okay that is your machine learning application you are trying to develop now what are the three you have to keep in mind the task the performance measure and the training experience right so what is the task now the task at hand t is playing the checkers and performance measure p is how do we measure its performance percent of games won against the opponent if it is playing against itself opponent is itself if it is playing against a person then opponent is the uh, uh, person it is playing with okay so the number of games won against the opponents is a performance measure normally it is taken as percentage okay so we say 98% of the time it is winning or 95% of the time it is winning only 5% time it is losing okay and uh, it is learning from the experience and next time it is performing more better the uh, performance measure has increased to 98% now okay like uh, like that uh, so the performance measure will help us to understand how good uh, your computer program is performing okay so the performance measure p is the percent of games won against the opponents and what is the training experience how is it learning how is it improving its experience by playing practice games against itself or by playing practice games against its opponents okay that is how you need to formulate a learning problem 
you have to understand what is the task what is the performance measure you are deciding to uh, measure the accuracy of that particular uh, computer program and what should be the training experience means how it is learning in order to increase its performance p at task p okay and uh, other type of problem is uh, handwriting recognition learning problem uh, say in banks normally uh, they uh, fill up withdrawal forms okay and they sign on that and they um, uh, have some uh, amount specified on that in in words uh, now uh, uh, a machine should be able to recognize uh, the words filled on that Uh, so that uh, it will uh, tell or it should be able to recognize the signature so that it will tally with the scanned signature and your current signature only if it is authorized then it will allow you to draw the money okay in this case what is the task recognizing and classifying hand written words within images okay so our withdrawal form is taken as an image and we sign on that withdrawal form and that is taken as the hand written words now it has to recognize our signature and classify written word that is our signature in that particular withdrawal form image and it has to classify whether it is matched with our scanned and uh, uh, saved signature or not so that it can authorize us to draw the money from the bank right that is the task now performance measure p is percent of words correctly classified okay our signature is correctly classified and um, actually we are the authorized users trying to draw the money uh, say some other person forged our signature and that is authorized to be uh, that is not authorized after comparing it with the saved signature then it is classifying correctly that it is not an authorized signature right so the performance here is good <laughs> because it is trying to classify whether it it is an authorized signature or not right so it is if it is classifying correctly its performance is good now training experience what is the training experience how it is drawing the training experience from a database of hand written words with given classification okay so it has a database where s can be written in some 10 different ways or 7 can be put in some different ways and we uh, you students write each word in million different ways right i can't even sometimes um, make out what word exactly it is uh, so uh, i actually feel that some uh, machine learning expert should develop a machine learning model to understand student writing okay uh, so this is uh, how training experience is obtained from a database of hand written words with given classification okay this is how we can understand the key features required to define a well posed learning problem now i have a question for you here a robot driving learning problem a robot driving learning problem now tell me what should be the task here students you are given with a robot uh, driving learning problem and you have to identify the three key features in order to develop uh, in order to design a well defined learning problem for that first you need to identify the task p then the performance measure p and the training experience e so what should be the task i don't expect you to be always right try to answer girl so far no body opened uh, uh, ma'am driving on road very good who is this apurva ma'am apurva hai she uh, us in 6 yes ma'am okay driving on a four lane road or driving on a state highway or driving on a six lane road or driving on a flyover okay all uh, the uh, 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 this this is called as a task and what should be the performance measure how do you assess its performance whether it is doing the driving correctly or not
uh, by distance yes. or yes. Somebody try to answer, right? Traffic rules and the instructions. Performance. Uh, no, no. Who is this, Gunshaker? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is your answer? Be louder. Follow the instructions of the traffic rules and some other instructions. That is performance measure. How do you measure how good it performed? What is the outcome you expect to make it drive safely before some error occurs, right? That is called as performance measure. So you want it to drive safely without any collisions. Before some error occurs, what is the average distance it covers? Okay, this can be monitored by an expert driver, right? So that is the performance measure. Okay, it is driving uh, on an average 20 kilometers before some error occurred with that uh, particular uh, robot. That is called as performance measure. What is your outcome and what it is trying to meet? Okay, that is called the performance, uh, the difference between that is called as the performance measure. Say you want to predict something and it predicted properly. That is, it is uh, having good performance. Uh, say you want to uh, uh, make a robot drive a car without any collision and it is doing so at this, for this average distance. Yes, for 40 kilometers per hour, it is driving without any collision or for entire day, it is driving without any collision. Okay, so it is meeting your outcome or not. So always your performance measure should be measured against your outcome, what you are expecting out of that problem, out of out of that computer program okay that is called performance measure you're almost there gunshaker uh, it is trying to uh, predict how good it is um, uh, sorry we are trying to uh, measure how good it is driving uh, and um, uh, driving before some error occurs with that car okay that is called as performance measure now what is the training experience okay. What is the training experience? A uh, ma'am set of images. Very good. Set of images and steering commands. In what way it has to steer the car? Say there is a car coming in the opposite direction. Uh, there is a empty space on the right side of the road. So steer the car to the right so that it can go safely without any collision okay so the images the prefed images and the prefed drive, uh, driving commands or the steering commands all these will be will serve as experience a training experience for that robot so that it can also record its current experience in the database and try to learn from it and improve its driving capabilities Okay, this is how you need to formulate a learning problem. Who is this who answered at the last? Apurva again? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, what is our goal overall? We have understood uh, at the more uh, specific level, but what is our overall goal? In order to uh, 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 conquer a learning problem, we need to define precisely a class of problems we need to understand what is the class of the problem that encompasses interesting forms of learning to explore algorithms that solve such problems and to understand the fundamental structure of learning problems and processes. Okay, so when we are trying to answer some question, we need to understand the entire ecosystem, what data is required, how it has to be analyzed in order to make a machine predict what is expected or in order to make a machine perform in the expected manner so that it ex uh, performs its best. Okay, that is the overall goal. So what are some disciplines and examples of influence on machine learning? Uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is making the machines uh, artificially think and uh, act accordingly and Bayesian methods, 
Bayesian methods are uh, used uh, generally where we have some uh, observed data and unobserved data. Uh, in cases where we have unobserved data, we can apply these Bayesian methods in order to derive this unobserved the observed data. Okay. Uh, always we may not have all the data available in order to predict something. We have some data at hand and we may have some hidden variables or uh, attributes which can be measured from the uh, observed variables. Unobserved variables can be drawn from the observed variables. That is why applying methods like by base rule or base theorem. Okay, and even computational complexity theory, where co complex uh, computations are involved, like in, um, uh, say, DNA mapping or DNA pattern matching. Uh, in all these cases, we can use this machine learning. Because um, uh, the human DNA is very complex, right? In order to learn uh, the complexities behind it, lots of complex computations are required for that. We can use this machine learning with the control theory. Uh, where we can uh, uh, control the process that are uh, going on, uh, say supply chain management or uh, trade management or um, uh, algorithmic uh, management, wherever you have a, a, a large number of small processes going on. In that case, you can control them very efficiently. And even information theory also. Uh, uh, in information theory, if you want to uh, perform some knowledge discovery or if you want to extract uh, uh, some important, uh, de uh, say, decisions from the existing data, uh, it, machine learning can be used. Even in philosophy, uh, like Occam's razor method, uh, where if you have some multiple best options, then the shortest option is the best one as Occam's Racer Theory. And this will uh, normally be used in HR departments, placement departments as applicable. And psychology and neurobiology. Uh, machine learning can even be used in psychology and neurobiology. Psychology, uh, uh, say, uh, behavior of a, a patient, bipolar disorder, and how he behaves. And remember, bipolar disorder, each patient behaves in a different way. Uh, and they have still common uh, characteristics. So how uh, exactly they are uh, uh, behaving and uh, how uh, treatment options can be customized uh, or what would be the probable diagnosis and how the treatments can be strategized in order to meet that particular patient's uh, uh, symptoms. Okay, all this can be studied uh, by using machine learning in psychology and neurobiology, as I said, um, when they're studying the DNA mapping or uh, when you are, uh, when they are studying the uh, neuron uh, communication in the brain for neurosciences, uh, uh, all in all these areas, machine learning can be applied even in uh, statistics by calculating the critical value, by calculating the confidence interval. Uh, say, uh, uh, I, ha I have made a statement about my data. That nine, uh, currently in India, 74% uh, of the patients suffering from COVID are recovering. How I have made this hypothesis uh, how, and how I, and, uh, I can come to such conclusion. I can do that only by analyzing some data, right? And most of the data is falling between what interval, what confidence interval? 95% of the data is giving me the confidence statement that 95%, 75% uh, of Indians are recovering from COVID. Okay, uh, so I'm gathering this uh, from the gathered data, 95% of the data is giving me evidence in support with my statement made that 75% of the Indians are recovering from COVID. Okay, so I'm creating a confidence interval. I'm making some inferences. I'm creating um, uh, um, uh, some uh, rules in order to uh, uh, support my statements made, okay? Uh, so I'm, uh, I can use this machine learning in order to support my statements made uh, with, uh, and uh, uh, statistically prove that uh, my statement is correct, okay? These are all the areas where machine learning can be used. 
in the next coming session let us see how to design a learning system very important concept because we'll understand how to start from the basic how to uh, uh, understand about a learning system first and how to design it and finally how to implement uh, design of a learning system is very important because it has to address the problem at hand uh, perfectly okay so first we need to design a learning system in order to make it learn from the experience to improve its performance at a given task okay that is how i conclude today's session any question and answers from the students today surya answered three questions tanuj one shashank one ajay two shashank suru shashank three apurva two gunishekar one and paresh one okay so this is today's students um, uh, interaction score and these interaction scores with the proper weightage will be added to your internal assessment marks so i expect each one of you to interact well in the class okay ma'am but for okay i am not going to give any marks interaction is when i ask some question you have to answer right okay ma'am okay ma'am okay, ma yes. yes okay any doubt No, slowly no. we start from the basic concepts and we go to complex concepts so each one of you if you don't miss the class you can easily understand the next day next day topics uh, most of it involves mathematical derivations and all so you have to be regular to the classes if you miss one class the next day's class can't be understood properly okay so i expect your regularity to all the classes okay see you in the next class bye 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 thank you ma'am okay thank you ma'am hmm